Lately, you may have heard people from the outside speak about carbon markets and wondered what they meant. I thought it would be a good idea to sit together and talk about these carbon markets and what they mean for indigenous peoples and our communities. I heard that carbon markets will fix climate change. I heard that some indigenous peoples are wondering whether carbon markets can help our communities. But I heard some indigenous peoples, as well as scientists, think that carbon markets are a waste of time and even harmful for Mother Earth and for our communities. We'll get back to this, but meanwhile, we need to talk about climate change as well as carbon and greenhouse gases. What is climate change? It's happening now. The winds blow less, they blow more. Rain comes more frequently and with greater force than before. Or it just doesn't rain at all. The weather is becoming more extreme and the world is getting warmer. Because of climate change, food sources are being destroyed by floods or droughts. Animals, birds and insects are moving or disappearing. Ice caps melting, sea levels raising, and coastal areas flooding. What is causing climate change? We and many other indigenous peoples have our own explanations for why all these changes are taking place. Why the balance between the wind, the sun, the rain, the oceans, the forests, and the many different life forms on Earth is upset and changing. But for now, we will talk about what outsiders might say. They say the Earth does get warmer and cooler by itself. But that science has now proven that human activities are causing climate change. They say over the past 150 to 200 years, the imbalance has been caused because people have been clear-cutting forests, building factories, driving cars, flying in aeroplanes, burning coal, oil and gas. Doing these things make gases that create a problem called the greenhouse effect. People call these gases greenhouse gases. The greenhouse gas causing the greatest threat to our climate is carbon dioxide, also known as CO2. We know there are other greenhouse gases, but right now, let's focus on CO2. CO2 comes from carbon, something that is found everywhere in plants, trees, animals, rocks, the oceans, and even in you and me. Carbon naturally moves around from place to place. For example, when we eat a plant or an animal, the carbon they contain moves into our bodies. When a plant, animal, or person dies, some of the carbon is released into the air as CO2 but the rest of the carbon is buried into the ground. Over millions of years, this carbon becomes oil, gas and coal, and is stored safely underground. When we dig it up and burn it, it turns into CO2, and that's what is causing problems. So how does CO2 cause problems? The Earth is covered in a blanket of air called the atmosphere, which naturally contains some CO2. In the past, the CO2 has helped keep in the right amount of heat to make the Earth a comfortable place to live. As mentioned, the problem comes when oil, gas, and coal are dug up and burned as people drive cars, fly aeroplanes, manufacture things, and burn forests. This leads to too much CO2 in the atmosphere, much more than can be handled by the Earth's natural carbon cycle. When the amount of CO2 increases, it makes the Earth's atmosphere trap more and more heat, and the global temperature rises. Just like in a greenhouse, that is why this is being talked about as the greenhouse effect. It's important to appreciate that not everyone is responsible for or have benefited from the releasing of CO2 and other greenhouse gases. 
indigenous peoples, for example, have contributed very little to the emission of these gases throughout history. Yet indigenous communities, especially women, children, and persons with disabilities within these communities, are affected extra hard. In addition to the clearly physical impacts, climate change is also responsible for disruptions in our cultures, life ways, and spiritual connections with the world around us.